In this video, we'll introduce properties of acids and bases and definitions of acids and bases. Let's start with the properties of acids and bases. Acids will turn litmus paper red. Bases will turn litmus paper blue. Litmus is an acid-base indicator that changes color in the presence of acids or bases. You may remember doing this very basic test for acids and bases when you were in middle school. Aqueous solutions of both acids and bases will conduct electricity when dissolved in water, so this is not a good way to tell them apart. Acids will react with metals and bases do not. This is a good way to tell them apart. Bases tend to feel slippery to the touch. This is not a great way to test for bases in chemistry class. Acids don't have a distinctive feeling. They tend to feel like water. However, if you get an acid into a cut, it stings, and you certainly can get a burn from a base or from an acid. And finally, acids taste sour and bases taste bitter. This again is not a great way to test for an acid or base in chemistry class, but we do encounter acids and bases many times within our everyday lives. Let's move on to definitions of acids and bases. Our first definition is the Arrhenius definition. It is based on what is produced when the acid or base is in water. Acids will produce hydrogen ions. Bases will produce hydroxide ions. Think about how the substance dissociates or breaks apart. HNO3 would dissociate or break apart into H plus and NO3 minus. Here you can see that HNO3 produces these hydrogen ions, so this is an acid. NaOH dissociates into Na plus and OH minus. You can see that hydroxide is produced, so this is a base. And finally, HCl dissociates into H plus and Cl minus. Hydrogen ions are produced, so this is an acid. The Arrhenius definition is one way to define acids and bases. The Bronsted-Lory definition is another. The Arrhenius definition is somewhat limited because you have to have that acid or base in water in an aqueous solution. The Bronsted-Lory definition defines acids and bases independent of how they behave in water. You don't have to have water, but you certainly can. So more substances are included um, in the definition of this acid and base. And this definition will focus solely on the hydrogen ion and how it is donated or accepted. You can also call hydrogen ions protons because they are missing the electron. In the Bronsted-Lory definition, acids are the proton donor and bases are the proton acceptor. So within the chemical equations that we're going to look at, we'll have one reactant being the donor and one being the acceptor. The conjugate base is what is produced, the product of the acid after it has donated the proton. And the conjugate acid is the product after the base has accepted the proton. Acids become conjugate bases and bases become conjugate acids. So within the chemical equations that we're going to look at, we're going to see two conjugate acid-base pairs. So we'll pair the acid with its conjugate base and the base with its conjugate acid. So let's see if we can identify some conjugate acid-base pairs. Let's pick a reactant and see if we can figure out what it turns into as a product. For example, we've got this ammonia. It most likely is going to turn into NH4 plus and not the OH minus. You can see that we've gone from three hydrogens to four hydrogens. So this means that the ammonia has accepted, has taken in a hydrogen ion. So this makes it the base. I'm going to use B for base. 
bases always turn into conjugate acids. So the product is called the conjugate acid. I'm going to do Ca for conjugate acid. So then this must mean that the water turns into hydroxide. So we start with two hydrogens and we end with just one. And so the water here has donated a hydrogen. It's given one away. So that makes the water an acid. Acids turn into conjugate bases. So we've identified our two conjugate acid base pairs, one in black and one in red. For the next equation, HCl is going to turn into Cl minus. It's gone from one hydrogen to no hydrogens. So it is a proton donor. That makes it an acid. You maybe recognize HCl as being hydrochloric acid. Acids turn into conjugate bases. Once you know one conjugate acid base pair, you automatically know what the other one is. That means that the water has to be the base and it turns into H3O plus. We call that hydronium. That's our conjugate acid. We've gone from two hydrogens to three hydrogens. So the water has accepted a hydrogen ion. That makes it a base. Bases turn into conjugate acids. You can see in these two equations that we just looked at, in one, water was functioning as an acid and in the other it was functioning as a base. There's a term for that, substances that can function as either acids or bases, and that is amphoteric. In the last one, HNO3 becomes NO3 minus, losing or donating a hydrogen ion that makes it an acid, and it turns into a conjugate base. And if HNO3 is the acid, NH3, ammonia, has to be the base. And bases turn into conjugate acids. Ammonia went from three hydrogens to four. It was a proton acceptor, so that makes it a base. Notice that uh, ammonia was a base in this equation and it was a base in this equation. Ammonia is a really good example of a common everyday base. So now hopefully you know some properties of acids and bases and two different definitions of acids and bases.